Hello YouTube, it is Champion DJK coming at you again with another weekly episode and of course I've got some stuff to share with you. I am still a little backlogged on content, which is great. Um, so I picked out a kind of a little smattering of things to share with you today. Um, I guess we'll start with, um, I did find uh, some Auto World in store in walmart crazy because it's just i never find anything in store hardly anymore but i picked up these i already have these cars well sort of i already have that one and those other two i this this is what i picked up the whole set was there except for the jeep i left the wagon behind you know and i'm not even sure why i should have probably just picked up the wagon too even though i already have one but i picked up these are extras um and then i am glad i found this so the reason why I'm glad I found this is because when I did get my Auto World cases, um, I think I ordered them from 3000 Toys. When I did get those, I scored an Ultra Red of this Chevelle. So there we go. Um, in that case, so now in this uh, in this episode, uh, we're going to go ahead and open all three of these cars and so I can add them to my display case. So excited for that. Um, so I've got this Ultra Red and I've got the Camaro Ultra Red. Those are the only two I've got from the series. I believe I have the Jeep coming to me from my buddy Crazy Todd, who got it off some Facebook seller. So I've got that coming to me, which is awesome, but I'm still missing all the rest of them, um, which, you know, whatever, the three others, uh, which is the Chevy truck, uh, both the Chevy trucks, I should say. And what is the other one in the series? Uh, I think it's the Ford F-150, right? Or no, the, the wagon, the wagon. So I'm missing the wagon. Uh, there is no Ford F-150, I don't think, in that series. Anyway, right? I'm getting so confused. I'm getting so confused. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, pretty cool. So Auto World, a bunch of cool stuff coming out. The uh, the Dodge Stealth is going to be coming out. I just saw some sneaks of that. So that's going to be pretty awesome. And uh, that should be coming out in 2020 Release 5. So if we do see that get up to Release 5, and we're only on... Release three is just about to hit, so we got that one, um, and then two more releases. I'm stoked. All right, so that's really cool. Um, a couple weeks ago, I got a box from someone who had sent me an email. Um, his name is Gary uh, Schrader, so shout out to Gary Schrader. Um, he sent me a nice little box of cars. Um, he just said he was starting to get rid of some of his collection and pare it down. His kids had no interest in it and stuff like that. So, um, you know, he wanted to share some of it with me. Um, he did include a nice little letter in here. Um, it just says, hi, Dave. I know you're an Auto World guy, but I hope you like these Hot Wheels I sent you. I like that you let them breathe out of the package. I collect 57 Chevys and Mustangs as I owned one of each. Slowly getting rid of the Mustangs. Hope you enjoy the cars. Regards, Gary Schrader. Okay, so Gary sent me a box of Hot Wheels, and um, <clears throat> I'm going to show them to you. But we're going to we're going to take a look at those in the uh, second segment. Um, I'll give you a little sneak here. Okay, they are literally pretty much all these in this little bin right here are all one casting, and it's a casting I collect. Um, and I still have to go through and find out which one of these I actually, you know, need and didn't have. And then he sent me, and I've already looked at these two customs as well. So we'll take a peek at those in the second segment of the video. So stick around to see all those. Um, pretty cool stuff there. All right. So there's that. Um, and then um, a couple weeks ago, also, I got a box from my buddy Tor. Uh, Tor is a great guy. He's from the kind of Chicago area. Um, I got to meet him when I was at my one and only uh, Hot Wheels convention that I went to um, in Lombard, Illinois. And I got to meet him. He's a super cool dude. Um, you know, he's sent me a couple of different things um, that I've shared with you on the channel um, in the past. But he sent me, so basically he doesn't order um, through like Shuko in Germany uh, every once in a while. And he asked me if I want anything because they have a flat rate shipping. So I, I picked up two castings. Um, I got this mini. And this is before I had any examples of this when I wanted this. I have two different examples of this now. But this one's actually got the uh, British flag on the uh, top which is kind of cool so that's a different one than the one i have uh, so i got that one and then i got the sweet e-type jag this is the first time i've ever had this 
tooling from Shuko. So I'm excited to check out uh, this tooling. Uh, we're of course going to open up both of these in the, uh, the following segment. So we'll check those out. So I'm really stoked for the E-Type Jag. I'm really stoked to take a look at that. And then I also got this uh, Majorette Celica um, right here. So we'll take a look at this close up in the uh, second segment too. So these are all from the same, um, I think it was from like Majorette, Shuko, whatever. I think they're like the same company in Germany or something like that. I'm not really sure. Whatever. Dickie's Toys or something like that. Yeah, Dickie. It is Dickie, right? Dickie something. Anywho, so I got those. And then he always sends along some extra stuff. Now, these apparently are flawed vehicles. And I don't know... Aside from one, I'm not really sure why he sent them to me. This one is a Honda Civic FD2 Type R FD Club SG. And this appears to be nothing wrong with it at all. Um, this is an Inno 64. So we'll check this out. I don't have an example of this um, Honda Civic tooling uh, from Inno. So it's pretty cool. Uh, so we'll check that out. And then he sent me some Hobby Japan stuff. We got two Impreza, Impreza WRXs, one in red, and one in white. And I don't know if he just didn't like these or what, but we're going to take a look at them close up and see if we can find some flaws. Because he said he was going to send me some cars with some minor flaws as extras if I wanted them. And I said, yeah, sure, you know because apparently he's pretty picky. And then this uh, Supra, which I already have an example of this casting. I've got it in white, but we can check it out in this uh, nice uh, kind of silverish gray color. Um, so that's cool. And then he did send me this. Now this, I obviously, there's, this is how, honestly, this is how it came. It came in the package um, and showed up to me like that. And he was hoping I could maybe fix it, and I would keep it in my collection. Well, I honestly am not sure if I'm going to be able to fix this. But we're going to take a look at it anyhow. It's interesting because I really thought at first, let me just get it out here real quick, that this was the same um, Porsche 911 GT2 RS. I thought this was the exact same tooling as the Mini GT, and it's just unlicensed. I am pretty sure it is unlicensed. I'm almost positive it's unlicensed. I swear, anytime you see one of these like little metal, uh, little tin, whatever, aluminum, whatever they are, plaques on die cast, it is an unlicensed piece. Um, with the exception of maybe like... Uh, ignition model they might be licensed but uh, I think a lot of these that come out of China that have these and they come out with like pop-up brands of like you know who knows what brand they are um, it just says made in China I mean we'll take a look at it we'll, t we'll take a look at the the packaging and stuff in the next segment I'm also going to grab the um, uh, mini GT out and we'll take a look at that tooling versus this one they look very, very similar. They are not the same upon further inspection as far as I know, but they look so similar in even complete with this one's got like that rubberized mirror, even though one of them did break off inside the packaging and that's what this is here. And the other thing that's wrong with this is the wing is also uh, busted on this. So we'll explore this and see if there's a possibility that I would be able to glue this back together and if it will hold. I honestly don't know if it's going to be possible, but we'll take this, we'll compare it to the Mini GT tooling. It should be kind of an interesting part of the video, so stay tuned for that. Um, we'll do that. And I think, yeah, that's it. So let's go ahead and flip the camera on. We're going to crack an Auto World Ultra Red. That's always cool. I'm always not happy about that. Uh, we'll explore this premium die cast stuff. And then we'll probably look at the the REO K that I got from Gary. So let's check that stuff out. All right, stay tuned. Okay, so let's start by giving my favorite diecast brand really some love. Um, so some Auto World 
So of course, uh, these are from uh, 2020 release two. We're gonna open version A, version B, and then of course the ultra red, which follows the version A traits for this release. So without further ado, let's start with this one. Uh, Danube Blue Poly, one of 9,800 pieces. You can go ahead and read that if you'd like. You'd have to pause it, of course. And open up that guy. And take a peek. Okay. Um, this casting's been around for a while, right? Uh, it's been around quite a while. This is a nice color for it, I will say. Wheels look pretty good. Uh, it's a pretty good color. Pretty standard wheels for it. And we've seen these wheels on it, I think, previously. Um, which is, you know, probably appropriate since it's a legit version of the car. Uh, there's a peek at the motor. So I was glad to find this at Walmart since I didn't have the regular version. Uh, in my case, obviously, because I scored the Ultra Red, which... I guess much better to score the ultra red in a case, just because these I knew I'd eventually find one of these at retail cost. So there you go, some paint flaking off here, and that is from the rivet. There's another little bit. Now it's all off, but yeah, pretty neat. Uh, they do put production date codes on the bottom of these: two twenty six, twenty twenty. You can see when they were actually made. And you can also see the tooling number. This is a 164031. It's the 31st tooling. And you'd say that's pretty crazy since it was in license premium release too. So this tooling dates back a while. But that counts all the deluxe toolings that did not have rubber tires and all that stuff. Um, those are all counted in that tooling number. Anyway, pretty nice in this color, Danube Blue. Um, I think it looks better, however, in this one. Uh, the Ermine White. If you want to take a peek at that. There you go. Base price was about two thousand seven hundred seventy-six dollars. Wouldn't it be great if cash? You could just go back in time with a wad of cash. You know, buy one of these and bring it to the future, bring it to the present. Pretty cool. All right, so this one in white looks awesome. The reason why I like it is. Because of the wheels. Uh, the wheels are way better on this model. And I believe it is the first time that we've seen these wheels used on this casting. Uh, Redline tires look great. You know, I don't think we've seen it in white yet either. I think this is the first time it's been in white. I think we've seen it in a blue or at least some color similar to the one that we already that we got it in there. There's a little look at the motor. And it looks pretty good. Pretty good. It's not my favorite Auto World casting, uh, but uh, interestingly enough, it is the first licensed premium casting that I ever got was a Chevelle. It was the like the champagne, like gold champagne colored one uh, from licensed premium. I think it was release two, right? Oh, memories. Let's see, I am just looking at my wall right now because I do have them in order, basically, of release. And yeah, it was release two. I got it in the champagne color, and it's a really old video. If you if you search back, it was my first Auto, auto World video ever when I was just discovering the brand. Um, it's pretty neat. So I think it was like right after I found my first Ultra Red, which was in the deluxe line. Anyway, there's that one. Uh, next up is the Ultra Red itself. So the Ultra Red, unfortunately, really, um, it takes after the, the version A traits. So it's got the, the wheels from the version A car. And it's got a white base. Um, and that's pretty much the traits of this one. White base, Ultra Red color. Oop, jeez. And... Uh, The traits from the version A car, so it's got the interior color. Well, actually, both of them are black interiors anyway. And there it is, an ultra red. The ultra red color is kind of weird in this release. I've kind of noticed, and I don't know if this has anything to do. It's almost like they painted this color over white. 
as you can almost see white see in the door jam or the, the lines of the doors right there it's almost like they painted the whole casting white first and then they painted it red over the top it's just kind of what it looks like it gives it a weird um, color that doesn't look as deep as um, most ultra reds or most ultra reds of the past so they've changed up the shade of this color i don't know if it's intentional or what if it's just a factory thing uh, but they've changed up the the look of this color a few times and i don't know i would guess it's probably intentional uh, that they did that but it just appears like this color this like candy color was on the sprayed over a white base coat I could be 100% wrong. And the funny thing is, is I could ask somebody and probably get a legit straight answer. But, um, I don't know. To me, sometimes it's just more fun to speculate uh, what's going on. And then maybe ask for an answer. So, pretty cool. Glad to get that. A little backwash that got under the rim of that wheel. So makes it look a little weird, but it doesn't matter. It's it's really cool. I'm glad to check this chase off the list and have it now finally open. All right. Uh, next, let's take a peek. Actually, let's do this because this is going to be fun. So this is the Mini GT um, Porsche GT2 RS. Um, made by Mini GT. It is manufactured in China. Okay. Mini GT is very fastly becoming one of my favorite brands actually i would say they are one of my favorite brands for sure the quality is just fantastic and the it's not just that they're, they're doing really cool cars and um the way that they are constructed i just really like they just feel very robust they all roll i mean there's a lot of premium brands out there these days not a lot of them roll. Um, you know, Auto World rolls, Greenlight rolls for the most part. And they're, I mean, you could consider them premium, but they're not like premium import brands, meaning, you know, they're meant to be sold, you know, on shelves basically in the U.S. So they're, you know, they're, they're made that way. These are just, these True Scale Miniatures Mini GT they're just fantastic it's just really really cool they just have very thick plastic for the um, plastic pieces that they use like I said these are like rubber so they're not at high risk of breaking off uh, the tires are rubber there the castings are screwed together anyway just fantastic I've said a lot about mini GT and I am just a fan of them um, honestly uh, but here is this weird thing so here it is now i know this thing is broken so there is that that we have to contend with right and this broken transit so nothing to blame i guess for how it was manufactured uh, before we look at it though let's take a look at the packaging real quick comes a uh, package very similar to like an no 64 with like an image in the background and just saying it's limited edition whatever what have you and then Porsche on the back and then this is here okay so nothing about this makes it appear licensed as a Porsche product and it's probably not in fact I would almost guarantee it's not Dr. Ng Porsche AG for Stuttgart Germany or maybe it is I don't know is this like a, you know, this is the only thing I can think of. Is this like made for like Porsche dealers in Germany? I don't know. If anybody knows the true answer to what's going on with this, let me know. I'd be interested in knowing. Um, now, I've seen these on eBay. Here's the other thing. Uh, this is the base of it. The base is kind of cool. It's got like a texture to it. And then this is like usually the red flag right here. I'm telling you. For an unlicensed model and this is just my observation by the way i could be completely wrong this thing is just like double-sided taped on so you could easily take it off uh they are individually numbered 655 out of 2020 in the year 2020 yay um but that's usually the red flag if you see one of these plaques on here like this 
it's like I think it's all coming out of like the same factory and it's not licensed it just doesn't say anything about it being licensed as well so it's probably not it's probably not licensed so here's the model um, multiple issues with it. it's been banging around in a package obviously it's got the broken wing here uh, one of the cool things about it is it does have brake calipers here you can see discs in the back that don't rotate with the tires that's kind of cool mini GT that one does not this car does not have those it's not like a super necessary thing it just doesn't have it and it's another thing that's indicating that it's not exactly the same tooling but you know it's pretty darn close the hood looks a little bit different Uh, the front of the car does actually look a little bit different as well. And it is constructed differently in the front. It's kind of hard to tell there, but it is different. The wing looks, you know, of course, nearly identical. But I guess the thing is, is if everybody's making stuff in true 164 scale, no matter what you do, right, it's going to all be close, no matter what brand you are, if you're doing a good job. Because you're trying to make an exact replica of the car, so if everybody's getting really close to being an exact replica of the car, of course, you're going to have some models that look almost the same. And this is definitely the case with these. Now, you can't really see the exhaust here because it's all blacked out, but it is basically the same as this. Uh, same with that bottom part there. But now, if we look at the base, <clears throat> this, of course, is screwed onto the base. It's a metal base. There's a look at the design for the base. Here's a look at the Mini GT design for the base. You can see the Mini GT has a slightly a little bit more detail. But honestly, it's almost like they just left a little bit of detail out on this one. And then almost made it the same. Well, it's, it's different. You got that in the front. The front looks different. So they are different toolings. I just don't know. This one does roll too. Obviously, it needs some care, but let me know what you guys think about this. I do have the mirror. I guess I could attempt to attach, and then I could also attempt to reattach this wing, um, which might work. This one's on, like, completely straight. If I try to reattach this where it's supposed to go, the, the wing's going to, like, curve around, which I think is why it broke to begin with see how that curves like that it's not supposed to be like that so I don't know what I'm gonna do with this thing I mean I'd attempt to fix it all just because I mean it's straight up broken there's like chips on it too there's a chip there so I don't know if it's really gonna end up being worth a uh, spot in my display case I don't know what I'm gonna do with it but yeah there's that so hopefully you guys found that interesting uh, next let's go ahead and look at uh, Let's do Hobby Japan stuff. Now, Hobby Japan is kind of interesting. Again, you know, these are made in China. There just really isn't, I don't think, anything that indicates that these are licensed models. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. Let's look at the back there. <clears throat> Feather white. Hmm. It's missing missing a letter there. Um, let's go ahead and open it. Let's take a peek at it. Now he gave this to me because they were there's minor issues with them, and I think I know what he might have thought was the issue. I'd be interested to know if like a lot of them have this issue, and it's how the wheel wells are actually like cut down. <clears throat> So they cast these things, and any flashing, they would have to, like, chip off. And see how the wheel well is not, like, a straight um, semicircle. goes up angles. It's, like, jagged almost. I believe the real car is not like that. This side looks pretty good. This side, not so much. I mean, it looks okay. It's a good example of the car. Um, Hobby Japan... You know, in general, the models look pretty good. You get, uh, you get, you know, inserted detail for headlights, inserted detail for taillights. Um, there are plastic base models. The thing I don't like about Hobby Japan, and I'm actually going to open up the other one right away. Where is that? Uh, red. This one has the same issue, by the way, the wheel wells. 
Um, the thing I don't like about Hobby Japan, they do look great, is that is the cost because the cost is very similar to a brand new Tomica Limited Vintage when they come out. These actually are more expensive uh, typically than a Tomica Limited Vintage when it first comes out. So if you pre-order a Tomica Limited Vintage or if you get one off from Japan Booster, Hobby Link Japan, um, all those places, uh, when you get them from them, <clears throat> usually your basic TLV is going to be about $19.99, $20, bucks, you know, whatever. These are usually $25, and you don't get as much goodness with these as you do with the Tomica Limited Vintage. This one's got a flat tire, too, on the bottom. They're fairly nicely done, but, I mean, with the Tomica Limited Vintage, obviously, you're going to get a metal body, metal base. You're going to get suspension. You're going to get exquisite quality, quality um, amazing quality control as well. And with these, apparently not as great quality control and just not as great attention to detail. But they are nice. They're not bad. So I'll gladly add these two impresses to my collection. The color I would really want it in is blue, but these both are pretty nice. So we'll go ahead and put those in the collection. It's kind of cool to get those. <clears throat> Maybe I'll look up my buddy Todd with maybe one of the colors. I don't know. I owe him some stuff. All right. So there's that. Uh, oh, one more Hobby Japan. Here's another one, the Supra. So this one also was a disappointment, this model in general, from Hobby Japan. Again, I'm not trying to knock this brand, really, but I'm just this is my observation here. True opinion. Oh, the, by the way, they don't. These impresses roll. The Super does not. So, I, my, my whole point is, I guess, if you're going to decide to spend some money on some import, some premium import die casts, and you have limited funds, I don't know if I would recommend going after Hobby Japan stuff. This stuff is okay, but... You know, I guess you just try to find the cars that you really enjoy, and whoever's doing those, that's where you, what you'd get. I mean, this looks okay. I'm, I'm assuming he gave this one to me or got rid of it because of the backwash or whatever, the black that's in the rims kind of, like, looks a little weird in the front. The wheels in general look a little too out of proportion and large. I want to get... I think there's a Kyosho of this casting... Uh, that has come out fairly recently, and I should get that. I think that's going to be the best version that's out so far of this car. You guys will have to let me know if you have it or not. I think uh, Travis, Heavy Metal 164, said he does have it, and it's it's pretty awesome. So, All right, so there's Hobby Japan for you. Uh, here's Inno. You guys are probably all familiar with Inno 64 models. Definitely an interesting brand. comes with axles and an extra set of wheels, which I'll probably just leave with the packaging. And then, of course, it comes with the a pretty well-detailed model. Now, these are more definitely just like standing displays. They're not really meant to be uh, played with, rolled around, whatever. But they do take good pictures, and they generally are very detailed, and they have really cool um, graphics. So this one is the FD2 Type R FD Club Singapore. So that's pretty awesome. And shout-out to my buddy... Chen Hot Customs. Um, pretty cool. So you get lens details for the headlights. Um, you get inserted details for the taillights. The thing is very, very detailed. In general, these things are very fragile. They have lots of little fragile parts a lot of the time. And they're just very delicate. These are screwed together models. These almost like appear... Ooh, look at this. And maybe this is the issue. This is why he gave it to me. That trim is coming off right there. So it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be glued right in. Um, that is going to be 100% fixable. So I'm not worried about it. Um, the other weird thing about the Inno stuff is it seems to be like wrapped in like a decal. Like that's how they do their graphics. They're like wrapped in a printed decal. A lot of them are like that. They're um, 
they're definitely just like wrapped in some sort of decoration instead of like you know like a tampo or a printed graphic it's almost like they took like a thin decal and they wrapped the car um, which is kind of cool it's a different way of doing it but uh and yeah these are super highly detailed they're cool if you like premium die cast this is oop, here's another thing the wing is also off so at least that one's going to be fixable, but obviously we have some issues with it. And just looking at it in the package, I definitely didn't see that. But uh, now we see it, and we'll fix it. Not a big deal. I can fix it. But <clears throat> maybe it's a big deal to you, again, if you have limited funds and you want to pick a die-cast brand to, you know, a premium die-cast brand to get into. Maybe Inno's not your thing. Uh, maybe it is. All right. Shuko. Here's another one. Now these I just purchased, so these should be in, in perfect shape. Now Shuko is awesome. Uh, very limited in tooling catalog so far from Shuko. Uh, there's going to be definitely some more stuff coming out as we go here. But as of right now, pretty limited. That's okay. Because um, the castings they do have, uh, they actually do a fantastic job with. Good quality control. Um, solidly built castings. And that's what I like. That's why I like Mini GT. Um, that's why I like, you know, Tomic Limited Vintage. Kyosho actually solidly built castings as well. Um, generally, you're not afraid too much of breaking something on it. And same with Shuko. Shuko's built really nice. Uh, metal, metal base, metal body, high quality, inserted details for headlights. Uh, this one's got painted taillights, rubber tires, it rolls. It's true 164 scale as far as I know, and it's pretty pretty awesome. Um, the Mini is not the one I was really excited about, though. We want to take a look at this Jag, uh, Jaguar E-Type. So as you know, too, um, Shuko, Mi or MJ Toys, Mio Exclusives, has brought Shuko to the U.S. Um, so they are a lot more accessible, I guess, now than they've been in the past. And that's great, because I honestly think Shuko's a great brand. I, it's a, another one of my favorites, just because I... And then now I have quite a few of them, actually, in the collection. And, you know, I, I really do enjoy them. I think they're, I think they're very, very cool. Um, again, limiting t limited tooling catalog, but sometimes it seems like the brands that have the real limited tooling catalogs really just almost because they really pay attention to quality. They don't release things super fast. They want to make sure what they're releasing is is going to be good, and this E type's pretty pretty cool. It's an older Shuko tooling, and here it is. So you get inserted details again for headlights. This one does also have inserted details for the taillights. The taillights on this one, admittedly, do appear to be a little bit sloppy. But not a bad version of the E-Type. There's a lot of brands that have done E-Types. This one might be the best one so far that I have in my collection. Maybe could use a little backwash. Or blackwash or whatever. On the, uh, on the wheels, not backwash. To give that darkened appearance in between the spokes. That would maybe be an improvement. But uh, other than that, it looks pretty good. Not a bad version of the car. I'd probably rather have it in green than red, but red is what was available, and that's what I got. All right, continuing on, um, here's a majorette. Celica. It's cool. It's got suspension. It's got opening doors. It's obviously way huger than 164 scale. Uh, but you get inserted details for headlights, I think, as part of the window piece. It's fairly detailed. The wheels aren't too bad. They kind of look like classic Majorette wheels. Uh, it's got a plastic base. Pretty heavy car. Definitely play value in this thing, though. It rolls like a dream. And uh, definitely not a bad car. And, oh my goodness, we are at 24 minutes already. Um, so, we need to take a look at what I got from Gary. So, let's take a peek. All right, they are all Ford 
Thunderbolts. So if you're not a fan of this casting, you can probably shut the, shut the, uh, the video off. But I am a fan of it. Um, he gave me a couple customs, though. We'll take a look at those real quick first. We got Kit. Knight Rider with some added real riders. Painted black. Pretty cool. Got the red thing painted right there. The front of the scanner. Painted the taillights. Nice little model. Thank you very much, Gary. Uh, we're going to have to move a little bit quick now because we are running out of time. But let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. Now, ah, this is cool. Um, so this is a custom Firebird as well. It's the same casting, the same uh, kit casting. So it's on real rider tires. Uh, obviously, the cool thing about it is he cut out the little uh, pillar right here for the T-top. And then obviously cut the uh, the window as well. So you got like almost like a Targa top going on with that. So that is definitely pretty neat. I like that a lot. So thanks a lot, bud, for that one. And it's painted red. It looks good. It looks really good. All right. So, uh, this is a custom actually too. This is a Thunderbolt. I don't think he did this one, but it's actually painted uh, supremely well. It is glued together. But this is a casting I collect. It's definitely kind of a neat one there. Um, Alright, so let's go through these four Thunderbolts. We're going to go through them kind of quick. There's that one. And I didn't do any research. I'm not going to be able to tell you what all what series these are all from, with the exception of a few. There's that one. Um, I think that's from 2007, 2007 or 2008 Thunderbolt, because I think it coincides with this one, white and yellow. I'm pretty sure I've got this one. Um, this one, ketchup mustard. So those three of the same deco in this grouping, I'm pretty sure that's it for those. Um, then you got, I think I might have this one. I don't know, I'll have to check. That one might be a multi-pack exclusive. Could be wrong. You guys might, might know though. <clears throat> I know for sure I did not have this one. I think this is a cop rods. Uh, car, which I think those are kind of difficult to come by, right? Maybe it is, maybe it's not. I'm not really sure, but uh, I know I definitely don't have it, so that's pretty cool. Put that one back in there. Um, this, this one I think I have in green. I think that's a pretty fairly common to find one. Um, this one, reptile eater. <laughs> nice. I'm not sure if I've got it or not. Pretty cool Ford Thunderbolt. And then lastly, so the rest of these actually are all in the same series. Uh, they're all in the Classics series. So I think this might be all of them. You got it in like an antifreeze. Now these have uh, metal bases. Looks like this one's a little off here. That front end. Oh, there you go. Oh, no, never mind. See if I can clip that back in, but see the front end? It's weird. But here you go. It's in like a, well, yellow, Spectre Flame yellow, antifreeze, greenish, whatever color. Uh, this one here. I've got a couple of these, but I definitely don't have all of them. I think I have this one in like the uh, orangish, bronze ish, whatever. That one looks really awesome. I like that one a lot. Um, so there's that one. There's the Spectre Flame Black. There's Blue. Pretty cool. And then a dark kind of purplish color. And then lastly, in Pink. Pretty cool. So thanks a lot, Gary. Um, 
I know this is going to check a bunch of these off my list, so I'm quite ha happy about that. So, yeah, thank you. Um, and it's just a nice little kind gesture, so I really do appreciate it. So, and that's going to be it for this video. Wow, we went long. All right, so I apologize about that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Please check out the comments, or check out the comments. <laughs> Please comment. Uh, check out my other videos, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, blah, 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 blah. And you guys have a great week. Hope you find some cool stuff.